Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Stacey West Preview Show. We're back after a bit of a hiatus. I've been on the main podcast, uh, but we are back this time. We've got crew away as we record. It's this evening making his hat-trick appearance. So we'll be receiving a match ball in the supporters bar tonight is Anthony Evans. Ant, how you doing, buddy? Good morning, Jake. And a very, very Christmas to you and the rest of the uh, Stacey Webb po- Stacey Webb. Ah, I've got it. I've messed it up. The Stacey West podcast. You know, I've practised that for ages and I've messed it up. But yeah, I'm well, mate. How are you? Yeah, well, well I'm sure we'll talk about why it's not been so great for, for, for both of us. But um, yeah, you've been on there enough times. So you should know the, uh, the name of the pod, Ant. I tried it, mate. I practiced. I've uh, I've fallen down at the last hurdle. You'd think, like you said, after the hat trick, I would have got it right by now. But you know, yeah. Thanks for having me on, mate. And uh, yeah, Merry Christmas to obviously all your listeners. Um, let's just talk about before we before we get on to what what's going on on the pitch. Um, off the pitch, we're back in football grounds. You know, when we spoke twice last year, uh, I don't think any of either of our clubs have been able to get into into grounds because of the tier rulings that were in place last year. How does it feel to be back at Gresty Road on a on a on a Saturday afternoon? Yeah, I think I don't know with you. We had we actually had two games, uh, Northampton and Plymouth, where we were allowed into the into the ground last year. We both scored last minute winners, and I generally think that was because that was the crowd um, egging the lads on. I reckon without the crowd, they wouldn't have maybe pushed for that, or you know the pressure wouldn't have told. So I think in terms of our good season last year, it, we did actually really help. But like you said. You know, it, you just can't beat an atmosphere, can you? Right. You know, being in the ground and seeing live things, you know, either with like a missed shot or the pressure on, or even like the social aspect before and after the game. The thing with me and what I always think with football is that you won't speak to them out of football, but when now I'm back and I'm speaking to people I haven't seen for ages, you know, when you score, you're hugging random people that you haven't probably spoke to for years again and stuff like that. So... I think it's critical both as a football fan from a mental health perspective and just from an atmosphere and social perspective that we are thankfully allowed back into the stadiums this year. I don't know how you feel about that. Yeah, it's I mean it's massive, isn't it? I mean, you know, if it weren't for the game tonight, being with an actual crowd, me and you wouldn't be meeting for the first time, I suppose. But we'll talk about I'll talk about football then. Um I mean you probably don't want to given the, the situation at crew, but let's let's try and keep it positive. Um uh, obviously bottom of the league, two wins all season. Um, have crew got second season syndrome do you think I mean if you put it like well, in the answer to that yes but there's a lot of reasoning as to why we are where we are so the first main thing then we obviously discussed this didn't we I think we've shared similar things with Lincoln that all our best players have left the club and pretty much gone to championship mm. um, teams and replacing replacing that at crew with our budget is nigh on impossible you know you've we've literally had the heart ripped out of our successful academy you know squad that have been in the team for three or four years playing the 4-3-3 you know the Corralix way under our teleattractive football you know possession base with that with that killer edge you know we have been decimated completely we've lost you know Harry Pickering we lost Parry NG we lost Ryan Wintle and then we've lost the attacking threat with Owen Dale and Charlie Kirk. Charlie Kirk stayed with Charlton, but obviously they've got um, aspirations, obviously, to be challenging near the top end of the table. Their replacements in the summer as well. We went to get some senior players such as Scott McDonald and Tommy Hoban. They then retired before the season even started. Mm. And then coupled with that as well, you then had a lot of the lads who were here sort of throwing their toys out of the pram and causing, you know, just untold misery on top of losing all those particular players. So examples are Luke Offord and Owen Dale. Basically what happened with that is they saw how much their mates were on and what they're on now. And we're basically that we're performing at that level. Offord seems to be doing okay. Tommy Lowry as well didn't play. He's only come back into the team as well over a contract dispute. So there's just been so many different things for Dave Artel to sort of contend with and I think just the replacements that we've got in compared to what we've lost are just no way near a competitive league one standard so I'd take Kermit, Basdeen, Tyrell you know Tyrell Thomas you know Jay Neil Bennett's gone back to Spurs because he's not he's got injured he's not good enough Ben Knight from Man City <laughs> he's been injured but you just think he's probably just not at that league one level so I just think it's been a, a perfect storm to what we were so consistent and such a consistent team over Dave Bartel for three or four years to 
to what we've got now. And out of all those lads that you mentioned that you lost sort of over the last year, 18 months or so, um, which do you think has been the, the biggest loss and who do you think has gone on to to do the best thing since leaving Crew Alex? Because obviously you've got Dale and, and Wintel playing together at Blackpool. You've got Perry and G getting in at, at Cardiff. Then you've got um, Pickering fighting with, uh, funnily enough, Teo Eden at left-back at, at Blackburn. And then you've got Charlie Kirk, you know, still stuck in League One. We weren't that impressed when he came a couple of weeks ago. But which one's been the biggest loss um, from Crew Alex? I think there's an individual that's got to be Ryan Winter. I said it. I said it when he was playing. He's one of those players where you don't think he does too much, but once he's out in the team, you know it's exactly what he does and what he just brings calm to the midfield. He, he, you know, there's no. He protects the back four. You know, he does the free balls. He just does it effortless. The the, the main uh, player at a top level that I could probably. Uh, align him to is Michael Carrick at United mm. always got time on the ball never rushes just keeps everything ticking over I think is what the other thing is is obviously as an individual it's Ryan Wintour but then that left side of Pickering and Kirk I mean mm. they were just telepathic of you know left winger left wing back just terrorised teams in League 1 and mm. League 2 and I think just that's a perfect example of what we've not got now. If you know, just that free flowing football, that telepathy, just that overall skill as well. And uh, yeah, so I think they're probably the biggest biggest misses. And um, in terms of in terms of the stuff on the pitch, then what what you know you, you said before we came on the performances are there. It's just not the results. What what seems to be the the missing correlation? What why is that why is that working out the way it is? I think the performances that we picked up in the last couple of games because we have been we started okay. Um, and then just completely went went completely off. Just players not performing. I don't think we knew. You know, Dave Artel was making four or five changes because I think one, the players weren't performing, and two, they just weren't performing in that four three three that we've been doing so for how many years? And he was trying to get that formula. So now we've gone to this three four two. I think it is. Or um, was that right? Three four two. Three five um, two. Three five two. Sorry, I'm leaving the play. Well, to be fair, with some of the players that we are playing with, it is like playing with ten men. <laughs> to be honest. So yeah, I think he's just sort of trying to fit square pegs around holes and doing every everything he can. And like you said, we have improved with that new formation, but we're still not getting those results. The performances are there, but then again, you'd rather have. I'd rather win a scrappy one nil win rather than have like this performance. So I just think it's like you said, it's just the, the players that we've got in on as good and we have had a load of injuries we haven't had a right back for about six weeks at least that's why Scott Cash gets playing right wing back when he's a striker mm. from um from Wickham and the, the the left back spot as well is you know we've tried to play with wing backs but we haven't got the personnel to mm. to play it and I think the midfield as well has been completely decimated you wouldn't think that one player in there would completely change it but with Tommy Lowry only starting to come into the come into the team. Like I said, he missed most of the season because of contract dispute and he wouldn't sign a new deal. So that was the complete creativity gone out of it. And Luke Murphy is obviously a Corralix, um Academy product, you know, over over 30 now. And I just don't think he's got the legs to be that defensive midfield pivot that we, that we need. So I think just throughout the whole team, there's been chopping and changes and Dave Artel's trying to find a solution. I think he may have got it now with this, you know, this three, five, three, five, two, but that's still taking time with the personnel to try and get them to understand it. I think it's a perfect thing where we're putting in uh, Zach Williams, who's a 17 year old lad in at centre back in his first season in a struggling team in league one. He's done well, but I just think that also shows just where, just where we are and what we're trying to achieve. And you mentioned Dave Artel there, um, sort of similarities between him and Michael Appleton, two very good coaches um, on the grass, very two good managers that did well last season. But like Appleton, um, Artel's under, under a little bit of pressure, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Like you said, the, 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 you said two wins this season. It's no way near good enough. So, look, I love Dave Artel. I think he's done fantastic for this club. And I do think... The fact that we've had, you know, we've had three or four really good years. You've got the promotion. You had us pushing for promotion in League Two, and then we finally got it. And then last season, 
comfortably mid, in mid-table, looking more towards the playoffs rather than any sort of relegation. I didn't think we get the playoffs. But what I mean is there was never any talk at all as has been involved in a relegation. Yeah. Right, we're always looking looking upwards. So I think he does have credit in the bank, but the, some of the performances and the fact that we've only got two wins this season is going to bring pressure. I think, like you said, from the outside looking in, Michael Appleton is obviously a good manager, but there's a lot more expectation with Lincoln. And I think he's sort of also superseded from the Cowleys, who are very successful. Michael Appleton sort of doesn't have that, you know, he doesn't have that success or longevity at Lincoln that Dave Artel does within crew. And I think obviously with Lincoln, you know, a bigger fan base with Lincoln, probably more expectation. And of course, a bigger budget as well. There's going to be more expectations. And I don't think anybody at the beginning of the season was predicting Lincoln to be um, getting dragged into a, dragged into the relegation fights. There's obviously rightful, rightful questions to be asked from that point of view, out, from the outside looking in. And and are you a Dave R. Telling, and then I, I I take it you are from what you just expressed. Yeah, I, like you said, I think for anybody to go through what he went through in the summer, I'm surprised that he didn't walk. Is my honest point because there's just that much stuff going on. So I'm very thankful that he's here, and I think, like I said, the results haven't been good enough, and that rightfully does need to be questioned. But I do think he's got credit in the bank. If we do go down yeah. and then we don't start next season well, then we need a change, but I think we need to stick with him because like you said, what are you going to do from a cruise perspective? You get someone outside of the club, they're going to want a big budget, which we yeah. haven't, we haven't got. If you employ someone internally, it's going to be an inexperienced manager. So why not stick with your manager who's got three or four years yeah. experience who took over when we were going to, out of league two. So I think he's the best man for the job, but yeah. we do need better results. And then, and then like you said, um, performances have improved over the last couple of games so I think January like probably with you're probably going to be saying the same thing you know mm-hmm. January's quite quite big we need to get rid of the lot of the dead wood that we've signed who just are not bothered about Crew Alexandria Football Club we sent Jay Neil Bennett back to Spurs because he just wasn't bothered we've got Tyrell Thomas who we signed from Wimbledon which we thought in the summer was a really good acquisition because we got rid of Omar Beckles and Ollie Lancashire We've got him as the replacement, and he's like you said, we're now playing 17 year old Zach Williams, who's come through our academy in front of him. So that told you everything that he needs to know. But I'm sticking with Dave Artel, but results res- results do need to improve. And I, I don't know if you're getting this at, uh, at Crew, we are certainly at Lincoln, but the, 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 the results and the performances sometimes receive a lot of criticism. But then you've got those that are standing up for the, the manager, regardless of, of you know, because of what he's achieved. Like we had that. Appleton in the playoffs last year. Uh, is your? I mean, we had a bit of a tiff with with Chris Maguire and, and the supporters on Saturday after the game against Hartlepool. Yes. Maguire had, had a bit of a word with the supporter, um, and it feels like it's become a little bit toxic. It, it, do you feel do you don't feel like Crew might ever tip that way if results don't pick up? I think where it did turn toxic and it did turn really bad was the three 0 drubbing at home by Swindon. Uh, in the FA Cup, and now they've gone and gone and got City um, yeah. in the next round, and I think that performance is where it really turned sour, because we were we were, just, you know, you've got a League Two club coming, you know, who've gone through what they went through yeah. in the summer, you know, patched up, got a job, and they just completely played us off the pot and bullied us, and we just did not lay a glove on them. I think that was the time where it was really, really turning, and. I even said and reacted after the match, oh, Dave Artel needs to go now. But on reflection, I think I was just reacting yeah. at that time. I don't think it will get as bad as obviously what you guys got at Link. Because I just, like you said, I just think there's a different expectation. And we we go in cycles here at Crew, don't we? We have the academy. You know, you, you're going to have three or four years who have, you know, those academy players. They're eventually going to move on. And then you've got this fallow period when we're now going to try and get the new lot to then go yeah. go through so I think there's a little bit more understanding from it but there is a, there is obviously a vocal section now rightfully so I do get it it's like I say if you only won two uh, league games all season there is going to be pressure and questions yeah. asked and I think like you said sometimes it's the performances as well isn't it like you can lose football games like the, I don't think anybody will um, go against that but if you see the lads aren't giving you know their commitment or, you know, they're not, you know, going for a 50-50 tackle, you know, they're not putting in 
what you're expecting as a fan, that's where it sort of turns toxic because obviously you, the fans, whatever club you're at, care. If you see the players that aren't putting that on the pitch, you've got to hold the leader responsible. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I apologise if you can hear my dogs in the background. The postman's just arrived and well, what would be a Stacey West podcast without a, an animal interruption? Anyway, um, talking about, you know, December then, it's quite a quite a hectic month, isn't it? I think there's like 10 games between, um, you know, last weekend, the, the FA Cup and, and the new year. Are you sort of getting worried of being cut really far adrift ahead of the January transfer window where there's going to be a lot of work for, for, for you guys to do? I mean, actually, we were not in that state anyway. I think we'll be five, six points adrift anyway. So I think it's already got to that. It's already got to that stage for us. But then, in a way, it it sort of takes the pressure off a little bit because you're already down there. If that makes sense, yeah. some teams will start sliding now, won't you? We we've already slid to the bottom, and like you know, there's only one way up for us, isn't there? We either stay bottom or we start making progress whereas I think once the rot sets in and you start sliding down the table that's where the panic sort of sets in but I think in terms of January who's going to want to come to the bottom of the league uh, at, at League One in January with our with our budget it's going to be it's going to be tough but then I think look we've got young lads for our academy if we're going to go down just get rid of the players that don't want to be here and then just play play those lads for then next season I think if we get relegated it's not as catastrophic as it would be for some for some clubs because obviously we work in a tight budget plus we're going to play the youth we're going to play the youth anyway so yeah of course it needs to be improving in in January but then I realistically look and go okay who would we get and it would probably be either unproven um, players probably on their first loan, like we've got with Jay Neil Bennett and Ben Knight. Well, they've not done anything at all anyway. So why would we want to do it? We've got Scott Robertson in central midfield as well from Celtic. This is all their first first loans. We need a bit of experience in there and, you know, who will sort of fight and put their life on, on the line. So... Yeah, I think, like you said, though, the performances have improved, but we need those results to try and bring us out. I think a real good thing is where we got beat 3-2 by Wimbledon, which is an away game. We won against Gillingham, and you think, right, you've got those yeah. two games. If you get six points, we're, you know, we're all right. But it just we just got no consistency. So, mate, we sort of get that hope. We're like, right, yeah, here we go now. Here we kick on, and then we just don't follow it up. And that's why, you know, that's why we are where we are. Um, have you seen any names linked with a, a move to crew over... Over January, do they excite you? No, the thing is with crew, we sort of get people who are sort of left field, really, um, because of our budget. You know, we can't pay any fees, we can't pay extortionate wages or any sort of competitive wages. You know, say Lincoln and crew in for the same player, Lincoln are going to be offering more money. So therefore, yeah. that player go to there is is it's not a criticism from Lincoln or any other club. That's just the way it is. They're professionals. You're going to want to earn and. All the clubs down there in January are going to be doing the same thing. So for us, we sort of, you never really hear it until the day before. And they'll go, well, who's that? And then they'll come in and maybe do, well, you know, we had that with Eddie Nolan and Michael Nottingham. I'd never heard of them before, but then they yeah. come in and they do, they do really well. So I think it, that's the sort of left field thing that we're, we're looking at in terms of our recruitment. Um, let's just put your attention on to Lincoln then, since you're on a Lincoln City podcast. Um I know you said it earlier. You're a bit surprised to see us down in 18th place. Yep, I don't think you'd be that far down. Like I said, you, if you think about it, you're obviously in the playoffs last season, and then you know to be sliding down the table at this stage. And I think you know you've got a competitive budget, and a, you know I never thought that I'd be speaking about Lincoln getting involved in a relegation fight at this time of the season. So yeah, it, it, I think for the outside looking in, it is a bit of a surprise. And obviously, we, we've sort of had a similar thing to you, haven't we? Where we've lost. Johnson, Rogers, George Grant disappeared to the championship, similar to you guys. And we've not really had those really good players come in. So I, I feel like there's a, there's a lot of correlation. Um, Michael Appleton is someone I know that you rate quite highly as well, isn't he? Yeah, I think, you know, he's an experienced manager, you know, within this league and has had success before as well. So I know that he's competent, but like you said, it is a results business, isn't it? If, you know, it doesn't matter what he's done previously. And you could say the same for Dave Artel. That's why I'm giving him time. But from your fan base, like, oh, we did this for this other team. It's like, well, OK, then that's fine. But at this moment in time, he's not getting the results. So there's going yeah. to be pressure. And like you said, there is definitely a correlation between the two clubs that are best players 
have moved into the championship and you're not going to be able to replace those players. The only team that could do that is, you know, the ones at the top with, you know, the Rotherham yeah. and Wigan because one, they've got the budget and two, the players will then go, well, if you come to League One next season, we're going to be in the championship anyway. Yeah. We wouldn't, maybe at the beginning of the season, Lincoln might have been doing that because obviously you would have got, you know, you would have got, um, you know, some, I think you've obviously got some transfer income from uh, yeah. George. I know obviously Morgan and Brennan were, were loans, but you've sort of got some um, financial back in that way. Maybe Appleton will say, well, okay, well, if you come to League One, we can pay you this, but we are going for the championship. Whereas yeah. you're not going to get a like for like, and that's what we've seen, but we already knew that. So I don't know if the expectation from yeah. the Lincoln fans was, you know, a little bit sk- It's all about perception, isn't it? And I think, like I said, we've got different, we were never going to be in the playoffs this season. We were never going yeah. to be challenging. Um, our, <laughs> funnily enough, our chairman said that and we were like, I'm not going to, I don't, but you've got to say it to sell season tickets, but I don't realistically think that we'd be um, challenging for the playoffs this year. And yeah, we were, uh, we we're bottom of the league. So yeah, it's sort of a swing and a miss. Um, we'll talk about tonight then. Obviously it's a, it, it's a really big game for, for both clubs because obviously we want to try and get back on that, on that winning form, find that winning formula and you guys are just desperate to try and, and take yourselves closer to the, the shape, the, uh, the pack above you. Um, how are you expecting tonight to go? I think we always have a good game of football between the two of us, don't we? It's never really dirty or nasty. It's two teams who actually try and play, um, you know, some attractive football. So I think from that point of view, it'd be full of technical skill with both teams trying to actually have a go rather than, like you said, you, a lot of teams, obviously, where we are, we try and rough up the opposition. Yeah. You know, if you haven't got the technical skill, you would try and rough the opposition up and try and get a set piece with that's never all. So I, I think it's going to be a good, good football in trying to get the ball down and actually play a little bit between the two teams. And that's what I witnessed last season. That's what I always associate Lincoln with as well. Obviously, you mentioned last season, we played you three times, obviously once in the, the Cup, once in the league, twice in the league, and, and yeah. you didn't manage to beat us, Ant. So are you, look, are you looking for maybe a fourth time lucky this evening? It, how's Lewis Montsman doing? Because he was an absolute beast at the beginning of the season, wasn't he? And he scored that yeah. absolute thunder, thunder, uh, thunder shot, shall we say? Yeah, yeah. family podcast uh, <laughs> against us, and uh, yeah, uh, and then Harry. I remember Harry Anderson. And to be, the thing is, though, they're they're well worked technical. That's what I mean. It's it's not a set pieces. It's not a scrappy. Um, yeah. You know, it's two well worked goals, and you know, you you would easily you know, a playoff team last year and I thought we actually gave you a good game but like fair yeah. enough we didn't beat you but I still thought it was you know well contested well you know well dual games but you know you just beat us with that little bit little bit of extra quality which is obviously what gets you mm. from you know security of mid table to then push into the playoffs maybe lost that this year is probably why you you are where you are I, I seem to remember having a conversation with you just at, after, at half time of the, of the game in the league at, at Gresty Road and you were like have you? How are you guys not scored five or six? Because I think we we played really well, didn't we? Um, right then, let's let's move on to score predictions because that's what people will be will be wanting. Um, you guys are, are at home, so I'll let you I'll let you take the lead. Well, uh, I'll back our team. We'll concede because our like I said, our defence and goalkeeping. I don't think it's the defence's fault that we're conceding. I generally don't think that. I think it's the protection in front and the the goalkeepers that we've got. So you're definitely going to score. Are you sure? I think it's probably, Are you yeah. sure? We've, we've, yeah. we've not we've not scored for quite well. Bar Carlisle, we've, we've not scored for in four of our last five games. Have a look at our goalkeeping performances at uh, Wimbledon and that'll show you everything that you need to do to beat us pretty much. So if you have a shot and goal and it's near the corner in any way, shape or form, you'll probably score. So I reckon we'll definitely could see, but then I think we'll score at the other end as well. So I, I'm going to go for a 2-1 home win. I've got to I've got to sort of be a glass half full in the fact that I think, you know, I believe that we'll, we'll, get, we'll get out of it. So my heart is saying 2-1, but I think my head is uh, saying something different. Well, thank you very much, Anne, Anne for coming on. I'll, I'll make sure I bring the uh, the match ball and the boot on the way over to <laughs> to crew this this evening. But anything you want to want to plug this after this morning? Sorry, I'm trying to get a bit of time. <laughs> yeah, what, what time is it? Yeah, <laughs> uh, but, uh, like I said, Jake, just it's always a pleasure to obviously speak to you and obviously have the opportunity, um, you know, to discuss everything football related. And I just want to reiterate, obviously, you know, season's greetings. Even though, like you said, both of our teams are struggling we still wouldn't have it any other way would we yeah. supporting 
supporting our teams. Like you said, you know, it is a blessing that we are. Sometimes you think when you are back in the uh, back in the stadium, uh, it's a curse, especially when you're playing so well. I think that's one of the things that was taken away from us as a crew perspective. You know, that we had two good years of football, attractive football, and we couldn't get into the damn stadium to watch it. Yeah. As soon as we're back in, we're bottom of the league. So, you know, that's that's <laughs> football for you. But yeah, I just want to reiterate, you know, just thank you for the opportunity, Jake, and you know, just a Merry Christmas to all to all your followers and uh, we'll either have a celebratory or pint this evening or drown our sorrows either way. We'll uh, look for a bit and it'll be good to, good to finally meet you face to face. Absolutely. Well, thank you everybody else for watching. Thank you again, Ant, for coming on. And we'll sure we'll get you on later on in the season for for whatever, whatever, wherever we are uh, around then. Um, but we will see you sort of later on in the week for a, a preview against Cheltenham. Thank you everybody else for watching. <laughs>